up, my people? We are talking today about nightmare clients, specifically the ones who are trying to not pay you, the ones who are trying to make you question your sanity. That is what we're covering today. Are you ready? What I have in my hand right now is an email from an exasperated person in my universe that's following me on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you should follow me there, at BronwynSF. But she sent me the most heartbreaking email today. Now, to give you some perspective on who she is and what she's struggling with, let's say her name is Joan, and let's say she's in the interior decorator business. Now, you will notice with me when I'm talking about people that relate to me or that write into me, I change details so that I'm not exposing anybody. So if you, if you wanna send me a note and tell me about your nightmare scenario, I will not expose you. I'm not gonna out you on social media. Anyway, Joan sent me an email that about broke my heart. And in it, she describes a situation where she gave her heart and soul to a client project only to have that client become so toxic and tense and mean that they were refusing to pay a part of the invoice. So the details of that are very specific to Joan, but what is universal is the feeling of despair and anger and frustration when we give 150% of ourselves and our clients like, I think you suck. In fact, I'm not paying. It reminds me of that scene in Ghostbusters. Remember when like Dr. Vankman and, and, and the Ghostbusters are in the hotel and they like, and they get the little green guy and they trap him and they carry him out and they're like, they, it's like a smoking thing. And they go to the hotel guy, they'll be like, that'll be $5,000. And he said, I have no idea it would be that much. I won't pay right? It's like that. It's like that hotel guy. And clients can sometimes be that way. And what it unleashes inside of us are some very bad behaviors communication wise, because we're triggered. We're hurt. We feel exposed. We feel manipulated. We feel lied to. We feel gaslit. So how do we deal? How do we cope with that situation? Well, in Joan's case, it was a two-way street. There was some things she did poorly. There were some things they did poorly, but mostly they were difficult clients. So here's what I would say. This one's for you, Joan, and for any of us who've had to deal with client situations like this. Number one, I want you to rise up out of your situation. Get that like 50,000 level foot view. You know when you're in an airplane and you're just you're able to see so much clearly because you're literally very high up in the air. That's what I want you to do. I want you to just lift out of the situation. As my business coach, Ben Kiker says, hit the pause button and pull up. So pull up and I want you to see this relationship from a distance. And I want you to ask yourself this question. What lesson is this nightmare client here to teach me? Now in Joan's case, from my humble opinion, the lesson that these nightmare clients were there to teach her was a lesson about boundaries and a lesson about having a good contract in place before beginning the engagement. Now let me, I'll get into the specifics of why I say that in just a second. But number one, I want you to rise up. That ability to see our life symbolically, right? That ability to look at what's happening to us and shift into a mode of perhaps it's happening for us. I think Tony Robbins said that. Shout out to Tony Robbins. But when you can see that, you stop seeing yourself as a victim and you start seeing yourself as an entrepreneur because that is what you are. You are nobody's victim. You are an entrepreneur learning lessons. And in Joan's case, these clients are about to teach her a million dollar lesson. Now, they may not pay her her full invoice, which in this case is really, she'll be out a couple hundred bucks, maybe a thousand, which I know is a lot for an earlier entrepreneur, but in the arc of your work, that's nothing. That is the cheapest lesson you could ever ask for because you will not make these mistakes twice, Joan, right? Because I'm about to walk you through what we can do. So number one, Identify what is the lesson? What are these people here to teach me? Number two, I want you to go back and I want you to write down everything you think you did wrong along the way. Own your part. Own your part. Where did you go wrong? And then same process, but what did they do wrong? What were their moves that should have signaled you right away? And really, it's like replaying the tape. You know, like athletes, 
I'm not into sports, but I hear <laughs> that athletes will go back and run the tape. Where were the mistakes? Where were the opportunities? What were their opponents up to? What were they up to? That's what we do. Number one, what is the lesson? Number two, own what is yours. Number three, figure out what their moves were. What did they do that was wrong? So let me be more specific. There were a couple of things that went sideways on Joan's engagement. Number one, scope creep. Scope creep means the project started out as a $10,000 project and quickly morphed into a $15,000 or $20,000 project. And guess what? The clients didn't want to pay $15,000 or $20,000. So as the scope was growing, Joan in good faith kept working, assuming that they would know that this was going to impact budget, that they would know this and that. Now, to complicate matters, part of the problem was because this is, you know, you, you might be watching this video from the future. Ooh, from the future. But in this moment, we're coming out of 2020 into 2021. We're in 2021, but we're still licking our wounds of 2020. And one of the big wounds of 2020 was that the supply chain globally was disrupted. So orders that were supposed to arrive did not. So invoicing that should have happened on time, you couldn't invoice for stuff if you were delivering goods because the goods didn't come. So the project timelines got all kerfuffled and mixed up. So the scope creep was nobody's fault and everybody's fault, right? It was a very unique moment in history. So number one, the scope of the project changed and there wasn't a conversation around that as it was happening. The second thing that was going wrong is that as you can imagine in the business of interior decor of a home, you have oftentimes a couple and each couple is its own, each couple has its own dynamics. There is usually a bad cop and a good cop. Sometimes there's just two bad cops and it's just a nightmare. But you have this very specific dynamic. And these nightmare clients were pitting Joan against each other. It was like psychological warfare being waged through the interior designer. Does that sound familiar? If you're anywhere in the services business, this often does sound familiar. And look, in Joan's case, it was a husband and wife team. In other cases, it might be a VP and, and their chief of staff or the CFO and the CEO and the CMO hitting each other against each other, right? What this is, is A, super common, B, super predictable, and C, super solvable. What might have happened in that instance of the pitting against each other could have been a timeout moment where Joan could have said, oh, you know what? I need a timeout here. I need a timeout. I'm getting two very specific pieces of guidance that are at odds, and I'm not in a position to know which way to prioritize. So why don't you guys resolve what you think the priority ought to be, and when you're ready, let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to pause working on this project until we get resolution, okay? And we can do this with warmth. We can do this with kindness, but we need to establish a boundary, which is I am not your emotional support peacock, as Keita Williams' success bully would say. I love that line. I'm not your emotional support peacock. And lastly, they weren't wanting to pay their invoices on time because they weren't billed in a timely fashion because of all that weird supply chain interruption. Every single one of these things I've just mentioned could have been addressed in a contract that was signed before the engagement began. Everybody could get on the same page and you could say, look, before we get started, I just wanna go through critical success factors. That's what we call, you better do these things, otherwise I can't do the job, which they would have to sign. Things like, should the scope change? We will have a conversation around pricing. Should there be differences of opinion on y'all's side, you will work it out and come back to me with one specific set of guidance. Lastly, I will bill you every month and you will pay within 30 days. If that changes because of circumstance, because of supply chain, because of yada yada, we will have a conversation, but there will be an invoice every month. Sign on the dotted line. That way, when things go sideways, you can re-establish your boundary and remind them what they agreed to back when everybody was happy and healthy and it was new during the honeymoon period of the project, right? So that's what I want you to do. When you're dealing with a nightmare client and you haven't had that, you didn't have the good contract going in, it's okay. It's okay. It's a valuable lesson that will change the way you run your business forevermore. So number one, accept it. It was a lesson. It might even have been an expensive lesson, but it was probably priceless because you will not make that same mistake twice. Number two, own what you did wrong. Own it. 
Go through and be specific. What did you do wrong? And number three, what did they do wrong? There's probably a pattern. In fact, most of what they did wrong was probably incredibly predictable. And lastly, get your systems in place and in check so that if you have to uphold your boundaries, there are some boundaries to uphold that they've agreed to. And when you're all done, you can exhale knowing, you know what, maybe I didn't nail that experience but I will not be making that mistake twice. And that is one of the greatest lessons as an entrepreneur, how to use the beginning of an engagement, the beginning of a contract to work through how you're going to cope with things when they go sideways. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you want to email me your nightmare scenarios, please slide into my DMs on Instagram at BronwynSF. Drop me a comment. Tell me what you want to know or send me an email. Bronwyn at bronwyncommunications.com. And yes, I read your emails. Shine on. We need your light.